viewers, hey first from first country with you. Just wanted to give a short video uh, lesson with you all today about vapor lock on cars and trucks. Just as a brief description, uh, vapor lock mainly occurs on older carbureted vehicles. Most pickup trucks, especially domestic trucks, were carbureted up until about the late 80s, 85, 86, 87. And as far as I'm aware, most cars were carbureted up until about the early 80s. Some cars stay carbureted up until about the late 80s. By about late 80s, early 90s, most everything went over to fuel injected. The fuel injected uh, fuel delivery systems were less prone to vapor lock. In fact, you very rarely hear about it in the fuel injected car. On the other hand, carbureted was not, and I'll go into detail about what a vapor lock is. But vapor lock basically would cause your car to occasionally, well, pretty much not start. It'd be as, uh, it'd be a, a crank no start condition. Other indications of vapor lock would be engine sputtering, stuttering, especially on hot days. But uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go over the description of vapor lock with y'all. Show you why why it occurs, and just some methods that. If you do have a car or a truck with a carbureted engine, what measures you can do to help either lessen or maybe even take away the opportunity for vapor lock to occur. So here we go. Okay, so we can see here that I kind of did my best to draw a diagram for you all. Carbureted fuel delivery system. In this type of system, of course, you have your fuel tank. And then you'll have the fuel lines running up to a mechanical fuel pump. Uh, the mechanical fuel, the fuel pump on the carbureted engine, it's, it's pretty much almost always located at the side of the engine block. The, the fuel pump in the carbureted systems actually is powered off of the engine itself. There's usually a rod that sticks into the fuel pump um, that actually goes into the engine. I believe it's usually run off of one of the rocker arms in the engine. Correct me if I'm wrong, but um, it's usually... Uh, powered that way. There's a rod that runs from inside the engine into the fuel pump and it just just kind of runs it um, in a wheel fashion if you want. That's what drives the pump. Uh, the fuel pump from there will then pump the fuel up and into the carburetor. Getting to what causes vapor lock. Since the fuel pump is up here, up above the tank, up above the fuel tank and up close to the engine, it essentially has to suck fuel from the tank up to the pump. As a result, the uh, the entire fuel line from the tank to the pump is actually under a negative pressure or, or a vacuum in layman's terms. Now what happens is, of course in a vacuum or negative pressure, there's less pressure than, there's less than atmospheric pressure. There's basically reduced pressure. Now um, when you have a reduced pressure, it takes a lot less heat a lot less thermal energy to get molecules uh, excited and as a result any type of liquid that's in a negative pressure is going to have what's referred to as a lower a lower boiling point meaning you don't have to get to, you don't have to get to as high of a temperature as normal to get a liquid into a vapor state and this is the same for, for uh, gasoline now this in itself creates a, a couple of problems, because as we all know, engines and exhaust get very hot. And the fuel pump especially, like I was saying earlier, is mounted right by the side of the engine. And it's, uh, so as a result, the fuel pump get, tends to get hot, and as the, as the fuel line itself is approaching the fuel pump, it's more often than not routed around the vicinity of the exhaust, namely the exhaust manifold, which can see temperatures upwards to 300 degrees. That's worst case. Uh, again, feel me. Uh, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm just kind of using round numbers here. So anyway, you have uh, the the situation is you have fuel that has a much lower boiling point going near. Um, equipment, as you would call it, that tends to get very hot. So what would happen in this case, and this is how vapor lock occurs, you have, you have fuel 
heating up as it gets closer to the fuel pump. And in a lot of cases, by the time it gets up here to the fuel pump, it's either at or above a temperature where liquid fuel can turn into vapor. Now, these fuel pumps cannot pump vaporized gas. It has to have a, a liquid gas in it. So if you have nothing but vapor hitting the fuel pump, the fuel pump essentially can't pump anything. And as a result, the, uh, there's nothing to pump up to the carb, and the carb doesn't have any, any fuel in it to supply to the engine, thus your engine runs out due to fuel starvation, despite the fact that you still have fuel down here in the tank. This is pretty much how vapor lock occurs. You're more prone to vapor lock, like on a very hot day, or if you drive around a lot in traffic. Um, things that, cause, that will cause an engine to heat up normally would also cause the fuel to heat up. And essentially, in these systems, the only way to really correct for vapor lock is to allow the, 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 the fuel system itself to reach a temperature that is below the point to where the gas will turn into a vapor. Now, there are remedies to fix this, which I'm getting ready to go over now. Okay, so now that we know what causes vapor lock, now we can, I can kind of go over the best ways to fix it. The first method, and usually your, your cheapest and probably easiest method to start off with, is by routing your fuel lines away from your heat sources. Now, your biggest heat sources, like I said, are the side of the engine and the exhaust manifold. You probably won't be able to get too far away from the side of the engine because that's where your fuel pump is located. But things that you can do would include routing your fuel lines along the frame rail. And usually I've seen a lot of people just route it up and around the front of the engine up into the fuel pump. You can also do things, uh, you can also insulate your fuel lines. You can wrap it, I've seen people wrap it like in heavy grade aluminum around the entire line. Because uh, rubber will actually absorb heat and aluminum will actually repel heat away from the fuel. And so I've seen some folks go as, go as far as to actually replace the fuel lines all together with metal fuel lines. Um, another method you can do, especially, uh, especially if you're fairly good with electricity, is you can actually bypass the mechanical fuel pump. I've seen people put electric fuel pumps into their carbureted cars. Um, there's quite a few aftermarket companies. I know Air Texas, one of them, and I'm sure there's a couple others that sell what's referred to as inline electric fuel pumps. And what happens here is you pretty much install a fuel pump under your fuel line. Uh, I recommend install, installing it fairly close to the gas tank where it's actually cooler. And you run a wire. Of course, you're going to have to run the ground. I think nine times out of ten people, people ground it directly onto the frame. And you can run your positive either up to the, directly to the battery with the switch so that you turn on the fuel pump. You know, of course, right before you start the engine, and of course, shut it off right when you shut down the engine. And, um, or some, some people just run it onto, like, into a circuit that's usually only hot when the, uh, when the ignition is on. Uh, that's another method. Now, the thing to watch out for with these inline fuel pumps is they do have a tendency to run hot. And if the fuel pump gets too hot, it's actually going to, it'll actually have a tendency to vaporize the fuel, which is pretty much kind of shooting yourself in the foot, if you will. But the reason I say a fuel pump, an inline fuel pump, is the most effective way is it's doing what the, the fuel, injected, uh, fuel injected delivery system does. It, it actually reverses the pressure problem. Instead of having a negative pressure in this case, up to the carburetor, you're going to have a positive pressure because the fuel pump is actually creating a positive pressure from here all the way up to the carburetor. And when you create a positive pressure, you actually raise uh, the, the boiling point. So you can still have these fuel lines running near heat sources, but 
it's not, but the fuel is not as prone to turning into a vapor because the, the boiling point is raised. But that's just a couple of the, uh, that's just a couple of methods. If you have any more, feel free to leave a suggestion or two down there in the comments below. And we'll go ahead and wrap this video up. So there you have it, my uh, wonderful viewers and subscribers. Uh, a little bit of information on how to help you if you do have a car with a carburetor engine that uh, has vapor lock issues. I might have mentioned it earlier, but uh, the, the, the main time is that you're going to see a vapor lock problem is usually um, high altitudes because uh, uh, high altitudes you kind of have that air pressure, the air pressure problem that I was talking about. That would lead to the tendency to uh, for fuel to want to vaporize. But at high altitudes especially, but usually just like either on very hot days or in conditions where the engine is going to heat up more. Usually like stop and go traffic, um, up and down hills, towing, things like that. It's usually when you're going to see a vapor lock problem tend to want to occur. But uh, I hope this information was helpful. And, uh, again, if you have any other tips or suggestions, something I might have missed, feel free to comment down below, but please, let's be civil. I realize that, uh, a lot of folks in the automotive, uh, expertise tend to be very opinionated, and I respect that. Um, but, of course, and I'm always open to dialogue, just all I ask is let's be civil about it. But I am Chris for Chris Country. You can always visit me at my Facebook page, Chris Country. Or, as always, feel free to rate, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I hope you all are having a wonderful day, night, week, weekend, whatever time it happens to be when you're watching this video. And we will see you on the next video. See you later. <coughs>